teams fell apart to masses. Greetings, fellow masses. I'm Crash Browsers. Once again, time Crash Scones with another top 167 video. Back in August of this year, I posted a video on the channel asking you guys to vote for your 25 favorite Skyland. You didn't have to vote from worst to best, you just vote for the 25 you liked the most. And after that was over, we had over 1,000 votes. And a week later, I decided to tell you what it was about. This video right here. This is the top 167 Skylanders video as voted by you. And let me just describe why I did this real quick. The biggest thing is if I were to make a video in my eight coming on nine years of doing Skylander content, it would be kind of obvious. I'm pretty biased when it comes to my lists. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I've looked at what I've had and all that, and yeah, I'm kind of biased with it. So obviously my top 30 would have been very easy out of the 167, and my bottom 10 would have been there too because of my least favorites. So right there, that's 40 Skylanders knocked out of the game with 127 just kind of sprinkled around. So it would have been ruined for it. So to make it easier for everybody and, you know, to actually make this video curiously and be like, hmm, I wonder what it'll actually be number one, I got you guys involved. So I asked you to vote for your 25 favorite Skylanders and whichever Sky got the most votes is number one and least. Fun fact, every single Skylander got well over 30 votes. So you'll actually see the votes in the video. I'll describe that now in a minute. But ladies and gentlemen, I always wanted to do this video, and of course with Crip Crusher releasing his Every Sky on the Rank video, I couldn't just do another Rank video because people would accuse me of ripping him off, even though this, that was my idea to begin with. Regardless, what we're going to do today is we're going to discuss technically your top 167 Skylanders. It's going to be a long one. So yeah, this is going to be a long one, so I just grabbing a snack, grabbing a drink. I would say go use the bathroom, but you can obviously pause the video and leave whenever you want. But yeah, grab some need, you're gonna enjoy this one. But I wanna give a little cl clarity with this one. So what's gonna happen is, of course, the Skylar will pop up with the number and how many votes it received, with the lowest vote being right away, all the way up to number 167. I got, it's, there's a couple things mixed in between that you'll get a little knowledge about the list and everything, especially in the last top 10. The top 10 was very surprising, in my opinion, for certain ones. However, I am saying something positive about every single Skylander on this list. <clears throat> Instead of me just being negative the whole time, because especially if there's Skylanders I don't like, I'm still, I am decided I'm going to do something positive for everyone. Of course, I get a little lenient on certain ones, but I always say something good about the Skylanders, so get excited for that one. But before we get into it, I also want to big, give a big shout out to my coworkers at my job, because I actually broke the script when I was at work. It was in between like customers and stuff like that. And not only did they help me with proofreading, they also didn't delete it. So, also my boss is watching, I worked, I swear, I just did this in between. He's lenient, he understands. I did work, don't worry, I still work. I'm going to work later today. But regardless, I want to give a big shout out to all of them, they actually helped me out with it too. They, they made sure, like, proofreading and stuff like that, even though there's a couple things I had to fix after. Jerks. Regardless, I'm, I'm glad I have a support team like that there too. But yes, let's get right into it. This is going to be a long one. I will see you at the end of the video. Enjoy this one, and let's get right into number one. Six, seven. That was that was horrible. Let's get into one sixty-seven. Taking charge. Sadly, with these lists, someone has to be on the bottom. However, Head Rush is a Skylar I've grown to respect a ton. Her charge move is extremely fun once you realize you can maneuver it any way you like, and the big stops you can do with her make any enemy dust in seconds. The fact that the lowest Skylar had 35 votes out of over 1,000 votes isn't a horrible thing either, so I feel like Head Rush should still be proud. Barbella is a Skylander that you need to play to enjoy. She does have her flaws like every other Skylander, but Barbella's mix of pure strength moves is something you cannot deny. Just stand there doing her rocky rep move is great for clearing out an area of enemies, and once you get the hang of the rest of her moveset, you'll never need to hit the gym again. Batspin is another character I've grown to like, however I do like her original name Frightengale even more. However, Batspin is one of those Skylanders that you need to try before you judge. 
Even though Batspin was a Skylar judge before I got to give her a full try, she became someone I truly enjoy, however, I still enjoy the meme of her existing. I love playing as Trailblazer. His moveset is something you need to try to enjoy as the stamping move of something once upgraded becomes an excellent asset while his main fireball move can do multiple damage to an enemy in the area. Trailblazer is sadly part of the forgotten cores from Trap Team, but he will never be forgotten by me. Taking a brawling character and giving him a gun is something that I can work in certain situations, and with Sharkshooter Terrafin, it works. Terrafin himself has a basic moveset, so giving Sharkshooter Terrafin a projectile weapon is something to learn and grow, and gives a fresh new life to an already existing character. It always bums me out that Riptide tends to be forgotten. I will never forget the first time I slammed an entire whale on an enemy and took out everything around it. It's still one of my favorite moments in any Rumble match, and giving him a fair chance with his two different sword styles is one you gotta try for yourself. I've mentioned before that when they gave us Hurricane Jetpack, I was excited because in my opinion, regular Jetpack was lackluster, and Hurricane Jetpack gave us something new and refreshing. My opinion has changed from regular Jetpack, but for a supercharged version, I still feel the same. Hurricane Jetpack is a breath of fresh air to this exhausting original Skylander. You yeah, see what I did there? Buckshot is one of the most unloved Skylanders from Imaginators, as he's severely overshadowed by fan favorite Pinata and the unique Mysticat. Buckshot, however, has a moveset you'll grow to love, especially shooting so many arrows through all the portals you can set up to hit literally every single enemy in the entire area. The first time I gave Buckshot a real chance made me a huge fan of this truly forgotten Skylander. It's hard for me to be positive about a Skylander I truly dislike, since they changed her already great original form, but I can appreciate her for what she has. The gun she has with its auto-focus aiming and how they incorporate her original moveset to mix with her Superchargers version is very impressive. Now, Supershot's Stealth Elf might not be my cup of tea, but I can see why she can easily be yours. As mentioned earlier, Buckshot was outshined by Mysticat throughout the history of Imaginators, and I can see why. Mysticat has one of the most fun and unique movesets throughout the entire franchise, let alone just Imaginators. It's too bad that for some reason people are so against Mysticat for their own shallow reasons, meaning they avoided one of the most underrated Skylanders of all time. I keep forgetting how much fun Torch is. When I recently played as her in the Core Lock Volume 2, I was never worried about her when I fought anyone. I love the range of her bellows and using the flaming horseshoes to do more range and extra damage is one of my favorite things about her. Torch never deserved to be overshadowed in her time in Trap Team. As previously mentioned, taking an already established Skylander and changing them to a whole different style could work, but what if you took an established Skylander and basically kept him the same? That's what happened with Big Bubble Pop Fizz. 
However, they made the Frenzy move unlimited, and whatever potion you drink before gave you a special ability, so that's pretty cool in my opinion. Even though she was listed on my least favorite list, I can always find positives in the negatives. Tough Luck is one of those Skylanders that so many people love because her pounce move is something they can use against any kind of enemy during any situation once you get the hang of it. She also has the unique ability of being on Robot Chicken, but the less I have to talk about that, the better. I feel like all the Fire Skylanders from Imaginators were perfect. Ember always seems to be underrated compared to the other two entries, who we will see later, but she doesn't deserve to be outshined. Ember's supernova move is great in every single situation to take down multiple enemies, and that's just one of her many skills. Give her another chance, guys! Come on! Coming back to Imaginators again to discuss Airstrike, the truly forgotten Air Sensei. Airstrike and his birdie are two of the best combos you can get along with Tree Rex and Tree Pex, and it shows throughout his moves. A ton of different combos can be executed with them, and I personally like when I get the chance to play as Airstrike anytime. There was a reason Kaboom was the last Trap Master left in my original Trap Master lock. Well, minus Drobot, my personal favorite Trap Master. Kaboom is a great mix of a Skylander. His range attacks are great for clearing out enemies, or getting the literal jump on the ones approaching with the rocket jump. Trap Team did not disappoint with the fire element, even though you all seem to disagree, as three of the four I've already talked about. I adore Punk Shock. I know she's very similar to Zap when it comes to the electrical water waves she can form, but I've always loved the underdog aspect. The two cores from Swap Force were overshadowed so badly by the two swappers, but they never should have been, especially Punk Shock. Plus, her packaging was fantastic, even though she had nothing to do with Easter. When I first got Imaginators and unboxed them, I got candy-coated Chopscotch, and I felt like I had to play with her immediately. I did make my Imaginator first, but not too far after I gave her a chance and she did wonderfully. I love how fast and powerful her axe hits are, and I adore the fact that she has a Hopscotch game that increases her speed. Sticking to the brand is my kind of language. I don't think I've ever had a bad time playing as Thunderbolt. Looking at him and his other Trap Master counterparts, Thunderbolt is my personal favorite as I love swinging his Traptanium Thunder Sword around and taking everything out. Getting used to his other moves makes him extremely fun to play as, but the whole swing first, never ask question method, it works pretty well. Blaster Mime might have the greatest soul gem of all time. Now that doesn't make him fantastic as one move doesn't make the Skylander great, but Blaster Mine is one of those Skylanders you gotta try to enjoy. The world might dislike Blaster Mine for some reason, but he placed higher than I thought he would. Now, I dislike Sprocket. That is obvious. However, I gotta say something positive about every sky on this list, so I can tell you Sprocket is a unique cup of tea. I know many of you will die on the Sprocket Hill because you love the fact she can shoot her landmines, and that I can agree with. Okay, moving on.
monkey see? Monkey doom! Using Fling Kong for the first time was a wild experience for me. I got him the same day as I got Blackout, so I felt like he was already overshadowed right away, but giving him the correct time of day was the right thing to do. Using a symbol crash at first will confuse you, but trust me, once you get the hang of it, you'll love it even more. Everyone is well aware how much I love Thrillipede, and his ranking makes me a little upset, but this ain't my list, so I'm not allowed to be angry. Plus, I get to talk about Thrillipede, so who cares? Thrillipede is a great mix of close range damage and an excellent ranged attacker, making him a great choice for anyone playing as Superchargers. Too bad he's weirdly expensive, though. I feel like Dunebug keeps getting forgotten. He shouldn't as he's not only one of the prettiest Skylanders of all time, but also has one of the most unique moves in the entire franchise. Taking the smaller enemies and literally rolling them into a ball to use them against other enemies, or let them roll off a cliff, is a fantastic move, and you should respect that more. I put Rocky Roll on my most disappointing list, but after giving him a run in my Core Lock Volume 2, I keep remembering how much fun he can be. Using his Boulder Barrier to keep enemies at bay while throwing the spitball rocks at the enemies around you is a great mix of styles. I'm glad I gave him a real second chance. Now, I've mentioned I'm not a fan of Smash Hit, and even though I never get the hang of his connect and disconnect moves, the fact that he has so many different variations to one weapon is pretty dang cool. I always find a positive and a negative, and I can even do that with Smash Hit. Treadhead has an awesome moveset. The fact you can do loads of damage while being one of the fastest Skylars and then doing his backfire blast is great for taking out enemies when they get too close and you have to run away. I got a whole new love for Treadhead in the Core Life Volume 2, and I can't wait to play as him more. The third Rumble winner is a Skylar that never got his time in the sun as during your time in Swap Force, you were playing as either Doomstone or Grilla Drilla, more for what Rubble Rouser can do. However, Rubble Rouser is someone you should give a fair run to as he hits like a tank. Using his minions as a maze or advantage too, as you can stand back and let them do all the work. My kind of supervisor. Out of every Skylander ranked here today, this one actually bummed me out as I 100% prefer this version over the original. Lava Lance Eruptor has an excellent moveset that takes inspiration from his original moveset and just improves on everything else. This is actually one Skylander that actually makes me so happy that he got another chance. <laughs> so much for Walmart Bash. Slobbertooth became a fun Skylar for me when I gave him a real second chance. I adore the move where you can eat an enemy and either spit him at someone else, or literally swallow him whole to get a health increase. It's such an overpowered move, and Slobbertooth deserves his own recognition because of it. I love Tidepool. I know a ton of you don't like Tidepool, but she deserves better. Her multiple ink bullet upgrades she has makes her enjoyable against any enemies, and I adore her whale tail attack. Fun fact, did you know the whales are the same ones in the background of Periscope Towers in Trap Team? <laughs> the more you know. Charmed and ready. 
I keep forgetting how much fun Cobra Cadabra is once I play as him. His moveset is one I love using every single type of move as they affect him in so many positive ways. I like that you can hypnotize enemies to make them easier to defeat or to guide them into their own traps. If you ever get a chance to play as him, well, you really need to play as him. Bone Bash Roller Brawl is a Skylander we didn't know we needed as a new version for her until we got her. Roller Brawl's normal version is unforgettable, but adding her to Superchargers was a fantastic idea. Taking her already stellar moveset and just polishing everything up works perfectly for this amazingly redesigned Skylander. The niece of Eon makes her appearance on this list pretty high up, as she's a Skylander it takes a while to get the hang of. Light Burst is one of the only moves that she has that took me a while to figure out how to use it, but after I got the hang of it, mixing her attacks together became an amazing time. Eon not wanting her to be a Skylander is an actual shame. Mykonoid is watching closely as one of his all-time favorites land at 133. Food Fight was the first introduction to Trap Team for the majority of us, and once we found out the cores were basically useless, it made us upset, but not because of Food Fight at least. Giving us Food Fight to start us out with was a great choice by the developers. Coming back to another supercharged version of another established Skylander, Double Dare Trigger Happy gave us everything we liked about Trigger Happy, but modified it to give us a Daredevil-like aspect, which, if anyone can pull that off, Trigger Happy is our guy. Plus, the extra lives things? It's not a bad idea if I say so myself. Gorilla Drilla has a great mix of range, terrain, and close range damage. Using his punchy monkey move on close range enemies rips them apart, then setting up his planted turrets and hitting monkey call on all of his enemies is a great setup to take out every single one of them. Gorilla Drilla is severely underrated, and it shows. Now, I love Pit Boss. His moves is a great mix of taking out multiple enemies at once and even setting them up to take out anyone else in their way. Setting up a Viper Pit attack and then just hitting enemies around while in your Soul Snake mode just calls for insane amounts of damage and tearing through any enemy that dares get in your way. When Aftershock got cancelled in Swap Force, we all knew the character had to be reborn somehow, and Fist Bump is who we got. Not at all a bad thing either, with how powerful he is at taking out enemies with every single move he does, and even setting up to take out future enemies. Fist Bump is a Skylar that I always love to come back to. Even though he was the last Skylander I remember during the Name All the Skylanders quiz, Countdown shouldn't be forgotten. The fact that he uses his own head as a projectile all while using his hands as projectiles, I absolutely love the fact that he uses his own body as a weapon. It's the most unique weapon that you can get. I love dinosaurs. Onward to number 126. Oh, I need to actually explain it more. Fine. Tri-Tip is a Triceratops, known for charging predators which is incorporated great in his moveset, and being a master of the mace isn't a bad thing either. Now you're waiting for me to talk about his soul gem, but this time I'll avoid it. Even though I still think it's too soon. Really... 
Now, she did place only one spot away from the very top of my least favorites list, however, I gotta say some positives. I love how you can continuously use the whirling blades to take out enemies surrounding you. I do also find it unique that they took bad juju of every air element villain in the game and made her into a full-blown sensei. Now that is undeniably cool. Deja Vu is a kind of Skyliner I saw at first, loved the look, but then felt disappointed when I first played as her. However, giving her a fair run like always, she became a Skyliner that is so fun to master. Using her Black Hole Beldum move works amazingly when mixed with her past selves and spacetime shots, giving massive damage to everything and everyone around her. And here we go again talking about a supercharged version of an old Skylander, and this one is the one that impressed me. I like how they took an already perfect Skylander and just added two or three new things to make him even more fun to use, and it's fantastic. The fact that they even took his jetpack and turned it into a Typhoon Turbine just improves on an already perfect upgrade. The Golden Queen Battle and Trap Team might be the second most memorable fight in the entire game, more on the best one later, but Golden Queen as an actual character is even better. Taking her amazing final giant queen fight and using it against enemies while setting up her winged scarabs to take out the stragglers is a perfect setup for this awesome villain turned hero. Chill is the biggest MVP during the Royal Rumble as every single match she is in turns out to be phenomenal for one reason. She's actually really good. Chill is severely overshadowed by the rest of the cores from Giants, but Chill should never be. Using the Ice Wall to your advantage to block enemies either in PvP or PvE is a great way to keep anyone at bay and use everything else she provides to your advantage. Chill for the Rumble winner of 2024? Hmm. Way back in my first ever video, I claimed Boomjet would be me if I was a Skylander. I still stick to that. Boomjet is the coolest Skylander with the most laid-back personality, but here at Crash the Skylines, we don't judge them on personality, we judge them on how fun it is to lob the bombs at every enemy and set out the airstrikes to everything else. We love that here. I like when Skylanders keep cannon to the past games, as Diveclops is Eyebrow's actual brother. His moveset is great for long range with his Warpedo missiles and his sonar move making in any enemy in the area easy targets. Mixing him with his amazing Dive Bomber Beagle helps too, and makes his brother as proud of him as I am. High Five is a Skylar that so many people kind of forgot, which is weird as I always have an absolute blast playing with him. There was a reason I have him as the header of my 5 Skylars who are actually awesome video. High Five was actually named via a contest for the fans, so people knew right away they had an excellent Skylar on their hands, even before he officially got released. Getting the hang of Hex is totally worth the wait. Hex seems like a one-trick pony with her phantom orbs, but finding out how to use her wall of bones and combining that to her reign of skulls makes her a force to be reckoned with. Too bad her figure is super fragile and keeping her in the perfect condition is a feat all on its own. Another 
Everyone should know by now my history with Doomstone and how I waited forever to find him and play as him, only to be blown away with how great this Skylander is. To this day, his stony spin move is one of my favorite moves in the entire franchise, and he still hits like a freight train. Doomstone might seem overrated to you, but to me, he's actually perfect in every way. Hootloop is one of the biggest fan favorites here on the channel, which surprised me when he only reached this far on the list. Hootloop is a Skylar you have to try to love when you first use him, but it's always love at first attack. There's a reason everybody who isn't even a Skylander fan loves this one. The first two-time winner of the Royal Rumble places on my favorite number of all time. Weird timing in my opinion, but Frino is one of the only Skylars I can play at in the entire series with and never once feel like I've wasted my time at all. Frino is the true definition of punch first, ask questions later, although he calmly forgets to ask said questions later. One of the best looking Skylars of all time, Fiesta appears on this list. He used to be on my disappointing Skylars list until his fateful day in Honesty Half Hour, where I learned to use his moveset properly, and I can gladly tell you the Trumpet Concord might be one of the most overpowered moves in Superchargers once upgraded. Looking back at it, it was obvious I was just bad at the game when I first played at him. Well, I mean, I'm still bad to be honest. I gained a whole new respect for Jetvac during the core lock from Giants. His moveset was my common joke of how it sucks and blows, but actually, it does just that, but really well. Jetvac can use the smaller enemies to his advantage by sucking them in for damage, or shooting air at the bigger enemies to slowly take them down. He might not be the greatest, but gaining my respect is even better than this spot, in my opinion. As I said in my least favorites video, Zulu is a Skylar who I never got the hang of, and as all of you have mentioned, I just need to see the good in him, which I can. Using Bird Call to take out a whole gang of enemies, which when upgraded to Birds of Prey, can just be held instead of tapping, that's something I can easily get behind. Although Enchanted Elven Forest is kind of forgettable, Boom Bloom is someone I can never forget. I had a very overtired experience with her on NCF Hour, and even after the second try, she was even better. Her whip whap move is one of the most satisfying moves I've ever used with a Skyliner, as it has great combos, and it just, you know, feels nice. Is that a weird way to describe it? Of course it is, but do you expect otherwise from me of all people? I really don't know why people dislike Wrecking Ball. It might be the fact that he's super gassy or somehow annoying, yet some of you like digs, so your opinion is very wrong there. However, Wrecking Ball is one of the fastest and damaging Skylers if you use his force field ball properly. If you think he's gross and annoying, then I wonder why you even watch me. I'm the exact same. Wornado is scarily fast, especially in the original game. Using his spin attack followed by summoning the tornado is a great mix of styles as you can spring into battle and start taking out enemies as soon as you arrive, even before you use the tornado. Wornado is a Skylar I needed to give a fair second chance to, and man, I'm glad I did.
Not only is the Choppy Mage my favorite Skylander to impersonate, along with Wildstorm, he is one that I completely threw aside when I first discovered he was a Bazooker over a Sorcerer. I shouldn't have done that since I played as him, I found a very enjoyable Skylander who uses the Bazooker class to the best of his ability. Now, just pretend you're a Choppy, so he can like you! Bushwhack could be one of the most fun, yet forgotten Skylanders out there. Now I've said this before with a few other entries on this list, but this one hits more home. If you've ever seen me play as Bushwhack, the Timber ability might be one of my favorites in the entire franchise. Why do you think I mentioned Riptide's giant whale? Using an oversized weapon literally out of nowhere is something I will always get behind. The Earth Element is my favorite element, so when Swap Force came into play, I knew the Earth Element would be the first place I'd go to, and although I had to wait for Doomstone, Scorp gave me an awesome time. He is the Skylar that has one of the most unique movesets that you can work in any situation, and is one of the best ones to master, especially in the early stages of your Swap Force journey. I feel like Scratch being here is actually underrated. Anyone who has played as her has realized her moveset is one of the best you can get, with the perfect mix of close range attacks and literally pouncing into battle, all while keeping her acting just like a playful house cat would. When people claim she's overrated just because they didn't nerf her in Imaginators, it's a crime and you should be ashamed of yourself. Speaking of Imaginators, Chain Reaction is one of my favorite Skylanders in that game. I adore how his Chainsaw does multiple damage when hitting enemies, and I feel like his other moves are perfect for taking out so many enemies in a huge span. Chain Reaction has been one of my go-tos ever since I first got him, and is hands down one of the greatest Skylanders to ever exist, in my opinion. I personally never found something I love about Gusto until I played as Slobbertooth, so hear me out. I never understood the whole inhaler move until I saw Slobbertooth do the exact same thing, but Gusto does it bigger and better. Being able to take out enemies and keep yourself healthy? That's a win for me. This one is a redeemer for me. Whamshell was a Skylar I wrote off the first time I played as him, even putting him on my least favorites list without actually giving him a fair run. But after I did, I found that he's very versatile for any Skylar fan looking to get a hang of the game. There was a reason Whamshell was super hard to find in the start of this franchise. Barely missing out on the top 100 is a Skylar I adored since day one. Flipwreck is a Skylar you won't like when you first play as them, as their moveset is a little odd, yet basic. However, getting his upgrades makes him so much of a better Skylander, and mixing his moveset together just makes him unstoppable. Man, I love Flipwreck. And we are now into the top 100, and kicking us off is Tom Kenny himself, Stink Bomb. I was always on the fence when I first had him, but after a few more tries, I grew into his moveset. Turning him invisible to take out enemies near and far takes a while to get the hang of for most people, but giving him the time of day is totally worth it. The King of the Forgotten Skylanders makes a surprising placement on this list as Fright Rider is the Skylander that is severely underrated. There isn't another Skylander that pairs as well as him and Ozzy, and I like how he can mix both characters' moves throughout a fight. 
It's a bummer that he was the one and done as an extra series version might have made him even better. I think Starstrike came at the wrong time as her being in Spar's adventure would have made way more sense. However, you must disagree as Starstrike placed this high. I think it might be for the fact that you can take her Stargate move and reflect it with her Cosmic Twirl to keep making it stronger and stronger and continuously hitting the enemies over and over. Yeah, it's probably that. When I first read the results for this list, a few surprised me, but this one actually shocked me. I honestly thought Stormblade was a huge fan favorite and would make the top 25 at least, but she sits here at 97. I adore how fast she is, and once you get the hang of her, she's basically unstoppable. Well, to me, because to you, you stopped her here. Jerks. When you have a move named Mega Nut, you know you're in for a good time. Stump Smash is a Skylar that so many enjoy because of how simplistic his moveset can be, but once you use him properly, it becomes a whole new ball game. Getting them set up with when acorns attack that slow them down? Oh man, it's game over for everyone. As the heaviest hitter in the entire franchise, Grave Clobber may have changed his element for no reason, that actually made sense to me, but became a fan favorite for myself as he uses a variety of wrestling moves. If you know literally anything about me is that I've been a fan of wrestling since the early 2000s, so I'm a little biased with how much fun he is and how he literally elbow drops off the Gaber Geyser. Ooh yeah! I get the joke a few times saying that I remind someone of Lightning Rod. Is it because of Zapper Field move as I have some shocking opinions? Or because of his lightning avatar because I'm extremely tall? Or maybe because he throws lightning bolts like the time I threw a water bottle at the camera? Oh, it's because of the beard and the shaggy hair. Eh, that's cool too, I guess. From the Forgotten 8 to number 93, Voodoo is one Skylar that doesn't deserve to be forgotten at all. His zipline axe has saved me so much time throughout any playthrough I've had, and I just adore sending up a tripwire bomb to watch a chompy wander into it. It's the little things in life, isn't it? Ambush will always have the honor of being the first Skylander ever played as, even before Imaginators came out. Which is funny, because I never really used him when the game first came out. What an idiot I was. Ambush is an insanely fast Skylander with his movements and weapons, which just keep getting better every single upgrade. He is also another Skylander that takes something giant to beat his enemies with, so that's an extra point for me in my book. Whenever I see I get to play a Zook, I get excited. I know I'm going to have a fun time with his bazooka attacks while blocking all the enemies with a foliage bearer, then setting off a mortar attack to hit the ones trying to figure out what to do next. Zook has such a fun mix of styles that nobody could get sick of, and if you do, that's your fault, and not his. When a variant of your character is worth well over $100, that's a strong start. High Volt was kind of thrown into supercharges but became a very likable Skylander as his shield move reminded a ton of people of Chop Chop. However, High Volt has the excellent spear that can do rapid melee damage, then an extra range attack when needed. High Volt is a very fun Skylander once you get the hang of his moveset, and even better once you master it.
wishes. Ninjini is a Skylar I need to try outside of her game to appreciate more of her in her game. Okay, hear me out. Ninjini outside of Giants has a faster Witchblade attack, but everything else lacks. So when you go back to Giants with her, you realize how to time her Witchblades properly, mix with her Bottle Blast to absorb damage, and still take out enemies, and it works fantastic. Distant always makes the heart grow fonder, or in this case, the Skylander better. When I used Nightfall for the first time, I had no clue what I was getting into. I kept trying to figure out how to use her correctly and every time, I did it wrong. Until you loyal viewers gave me a ton of tips to use her correctly. Her Whiplash ability reminds me so much of Boom Bloom's Wig Attack, and I actually know how to use her Dash ability correctly with it. I'm very glad you guys forced me to give her another chance, because she's not bad at all. Alright, Splat is pretty great. Looking at her obvious Splatoon ripoff is an oversight, as her moveset does have Splatoon inspired moves, but using them show that it isn't a blatant ripoff. Using her Inkling ability, especially when leveled up, is great for taking out enemies everywhere, all while taking out enemies with your brush staff. I've always written off Splat until I actually giving her the time of day, and I'm glad you guys did too. Crankcase might be one of the few villains turned senseis that kept their original moveset from the big fight scene. I do love the fact that you can use the goo to not only slow enemies down, but give them extra damage to take them out faster. Even using the hatbots work to your advantage when upgraded, as they become great minions to focus on taking out every enemy if you miss one or two. Dr. Crankcase is a fan favorite for a reason, and well, this just proves its point. Now, I won't be the first to tell you that I'm not a fan of Eruptor, but I can't deny the impact he has made on the fanbase. I even had a giant Eruptor Helium Balloon at one point that cost me literally $10, including Helium. But we aren't here to discuss merchandise, we're discussing how Eruptor has impacted you playing as him. I do like how he's great on terrain damage when he leaves fiery pools everywhere, so for that one enemy you always miss, he will get taken out. I painted a rock to look like Shroom Boom. That's how much of an impact he had on me, and I know for a fact he's had a bigger impact on a load of you watching. Shroom Boom was one of the first Skylanders a majority of you loved on your first playthrough of Giants, and it was a blast learning how to shoot his mushroom projectiles over his mushroom barriers. I always know that when Shroom Boom shows up, you guys will be on board, even if I play horrifically as him. This Skylander is one of the most fun characters you can use in the entire franchise. Flare Wolf has everything you need. Ride the Rocket works for speed. Rockets Away is great for taking out far away enemies, and the secret weapon is absolutely fantastic for taking out enemies right in front of you. If this was my own list, Flare Wolf would be so much higher as I think he legit could be the best Skylander in the entire franchise. Yeah, I said it. So whenever Skylanders releases a new game, the starter pack Skylanders are the ones you always get to see how great this game can be. I'm so glad they started off with Kingpin. A legit perfect brawler class Skylander to kick out the game, Kingpin has an awesome upgrade path no matter which path you choose. I always have hope with the Skylander devs to give us something great to start our journey off with Imaginators, and they did just that. I respect the heck out of Sunburn. 
It's wild that a Skylander that went from number one on my least favorites list to become one of my favorites from Spyro's Adventure after. Using his Phoenix Dash to fly through a level and mixing his teleport move is great for taking out enemies super fast and then hitting his flamethrower breath to take out the rest. Sunburn has been shafted so much since he never got a single repose or anything later and honestly, I think he would have been way higher up if he did. Taking an Archean robot and putting him on your team can always work for your advantage. Drill Sergeant is a Skylander that can work in any type of battle, when you speed past an enemy but then focus your auto blaster on them. The Drill Rockets can get annoying when they reload, but when they are reloading, just use the blaster. It's not rocket science, unlike Drill Sergeant's main attack. Speeding through a level with him is also fun, but then you miss the best parts of him, which is not fun, unlike him, who is fun. Making the debut for the guest characters is Dr. Neo Cortex, and not a bad showing at all. Cortex was another character that they gave a weird class to as he literally uses a pistol for his main move. However, his Sky Chi does have a staff, so he has that. I love that Uku Uku is incorporated into his moveset and becomes one of my favorite moves to use with him also. I'm very glad they didn't limit him to just one game too, so everyone can see how great he is. So this was a surprise for me. I honestly didn't think this many people liked Firecracken, but I guess I'm always using him wrong. I do love how his character is showing off his Chinese New Year's inspiration with the Dragon Prey move which is actually very powerful too, since you can let it run on its own and go back to swing your staff at them to take them all out. Uh, you know what, yeah I see why you guys like him now. Skyland's original mother is here at the 77th spot and she deserves her shine in the spotlight. Sonic Boom is excellent for taking out a spread of enemies thanks to the fact that you can set out a handful of babies and use their sonic ways to take everyone out. She tends to be overshadowed a ton in the first game which is a bummer as she is one of the best Skylanders for any new player. Plus, as Skyland's original mom, you should never disrespect your mother. Although he gives Torch the creeps, Hoodsickle is a fantastic villain turned sensei. Making his return in Imaginators, it was a surprise we didn't know we needed as they upgrade his already great staff into a dual-sided scythe to slice through enemies in seconds. With a moveset that's easy to pick up but hard to master, Hoodsickle gave us an unforgettable experience in Imaginators. Free Ranger is the king of the redemption arc. I went to Honesty Half Hour not liking him until I had to give him the chance and man oh man, I was blown away. Literally. The Ride the Wind ability works so well for blowing through enemies and the Stormbade Slash breaks the wind around them and at the right time the eyes of the storm bring sun to a cloudy day. How's that for a pun based entry? It's me, there had to be at least one. The Fire Element came out swinging, literally, when Swap Force came into play. Smolder Dash was one of the first core Skylanders I used in my playthrough and I'm so glad she was the start, even though Frino was excellent too. Smolder Dash has two different playstyles, whether you have her in Eclipse mode or not, meaning every fight can play out differently. There's a clear reason I was so happy playing with her in Honesty Half Hour, and this shows why. I always jokingly talk about the terror that is wind up in the Skylander Royal Rumbles, but it's so easy to see how great he is when playing as him in any situation. He isn't just a great PvP option, but also when taking out regular enemies. 
My biggest fear when facing him in the Rumble is jumping because the moment you're in the air, he is juggling you, and that's game over. So y'all know how disappointed I was with Robo and how I personally think he's the most overrated Skylar of all time, but this list is supposed to be positives and I can always find the positives in a negative. I said early how I like that Chain Reaction can do multiple hits of damage with his chainsaws and Robo can do the exact same with his arrows. The fact that you can multi-hit an enemy with one shot is kinda cool, meaning I can use him less when needed. Oh, oops, I went negative again, I'm sorry. Okay, I find it very interesting that two of the rarest Imaginators you can get are now side by side, but I guess it makes sense as not many people have had the chance to play as them, but I can guarantee you that Wildstorm is the better option of the two. As this mix of close range and distant moves can be used in every fight and mixed perfectly together, Wildstorm does unlock the less superior level, but he makes up for it by being literally 20 times better. Starcast might be the most fun I had right out of the gate with a Skylander, especially in Imaginators. I still vividly remember going through the Dark Sensei realm with him, and you can too since there's a whole series on the channel, but using him to take out enemies with his shurikens and jumping into his Starcer to literally fly through the rest of the level and take out every single thing that stands in your way. Plus, if you ever get bored, just do a decoy and let him do the work. Greatest supervisor ever. I keep forgetting how much people love Trap Shadow. For myself, I always go, oh yeah, I really like him, but you guys never forget it. He's such a versatile Skylar with his unique moveset, as his Shadow Claws do so much damage and have an excellent combo attack added to it, and then using a Snap Trap move to get the jump on enemies is always a blast. I need to remember Trap Shadow more, as he's actually one of the best swappers out there. Roller Brawl saved my life so many times trying to get the 3 stars on a ton of levels, including the boss fights. I don't think I've ever played as Roller Brawl and had any issues, even when you first get her and she doesn't have a single upgrade, as she keeps getting better and better with each one. My running joke is how I tell people to give me a reason you dislike her, and not a single person gave me a good reason. I knew you'd fail the task I clearly gave you. Toasty Ghosty Roasty makes his appearance on the list as the 67th spot, and man, what a spot for him. Ghost Roaster to this day has one of the wildest movesets you'll ever see when you can heal yourself so easily, making any encounter an experience. He is one Skylander that I never gave the true time of day to in my first encounter with him, and years later, I learned how to appreciate him way more during the Forgotten Lock. A few years ago, I'd be so confused at why he would be this high up, but now, I can see why. History Maker himself, Crusher has done so much on this channel to change the history of it. From being the first Skylander to debut in the NCF Hour, and doing that moment from the Giant Lock. Go look it up yourselves, I ain't revealing it. Crusher has a powerful moveset that at first made me disappointed, but then I grew to like him as he became one of the heaviest hitters you can get in Giants, and redeemed himself for me since Earth is my favorite element, and being disappointed by your favorite element is not a good thing. Chopper's backstory is enough to make him a Skylar I love, as he literally overcame an obstacle in his life and made himself superior to his bullies, just like I did with myself. If I were judging Skylars on backstory, he would be up there, but here at Crash the Skylands Incorporated, we do more than just that. 
Chopper has so much power behind his moves, and after maxing out his stats, he becomes one of the best cores the game has ever had. To this day, I always get excited to talk about Shortcut as he is one of the most underrated Skylanders that Trap Team brought to the table. The mashing of his first attack to take out enemies is one of the most blissful moments in gaming, and using his phantom puppets to keep the enemies on their toes works fantastic. I'm really happy that Trap Team had the perfect four options for the undead element, and since Shortcut is a Trap Master, it gave me even more reason to play as this fantastic choice. I may always make the joke about how the greatest thing about Hata is the fact they can turn into a motorbike, but looking back at it, I very rarely use that move, if ever. I did, however, love setting up oil blobs that set off a chain reaction when I used the flame fire burst against it. It's so good at taking out so many enemies so fast and made my original time playing Giants so much more fun. Slam Bam has the honor of being the first Skylander I own to have ever been broken in half. He's also the only one to have done it. Good thing he can freeze himself to repair himself back together. Yeah, that's how I'm starting off this entry, so you're welcome. Slam Bam is probably the first Skylander you saw and instantly knew you'd like him. That I know because I was in that area too. I also love the fact that he uses a snowboard in his upgrade path to make him even cooler. Oh no, I did a pun again. So Boomer is a Skylander that I considered buying online for over $30 when I was missing out on him just to complete my Spyro's Adventure collection. Thankfully, I found him at a way better deal later, and the waiting seemed to be worth it. I enjoyed getting in the hang of kicking the troll bomb towards enemies when I wasn't just placing it behind me to let those idiots walk into themselves. Boomer is the kind of Skylander that any path works for him too, as I have two different Boomers with both paths, and I couldn't find an issue with either. It's a true win-win. Rounding out the 60s is Nightmare, the trap master given to us to introduce the dark element to Skylanders. Now, I've always been open to how Blackout is the better deal, but her flambarge is such a unique weapon and how she hands it is even more interesting. A simple swing attack can take out numerous enemies, and then giving them a charge attack gets the jump on them before they can get the jump on you. I think this is a great start to the dark element. Everyone loves Echo. I know this. Not only is she one of the coolest designed Skyliners, but her whole aesthetic is something we can truly get behind. The fact that she's constantly bouncing to the sound of her headphones is the most relatable personality trait we could all have. Now, looking to her moves, the mix of bubbles and sonic waves she uses to take out so many enemies while keeping her moving and avoiding certain peril. Echo is one of the hardest to find Skyliners, and for the right price, she is most certainly worth it. Who's a good boy? It's Funny Bone. Yeah, that was lame, but Funny Bone isn't. Good job, me. Anyways, Funny Bone is the classic dog you've come to love, because if you don't like dogs, then you're not worth my time. Funny Bone does give you more reasons to love him, however, especially the bone paws that can heal you during the downtimes after a battle, which is ironic as Maggie heals my mental wounds every day when I'm with her. Wholesome ending indeed. I'm not mad. I'm not even disappointed. Bash is not everyone's cup of tea. He's mine with a lemon slice and more, but you all know my history with Bash and how I've literally loved him since the first time I played as him. 
Bash has everything I want in a Skylar with range, speed, and pure strength mixed into such a likable character and design. I love Bash more than anyone else on this list. I'm very biased, but I'm kind of glad that you guys aren't. When you get your character re-released exactly the same in a future game, along with a Series 2 version, you must have done something correct. Double Trouble is so much fun to start with. Using the Elrich Beam to take out enemies and setting up exploding doubles throughout is so good for first time players, and it's great that even in the second game, they upgrade the Elrich Beam to make it even more powerful. It's a huge win, win, win. Over 100 entries later, we get the one that inspired the odd supercharged version, Terrafin. I remember first using Terrafin in my favorite expansion pack level, Pirate Seas, aka the one he came with, and when I first dove underground, I knew it was gonna be a fun time. After upgrading him, his Earth Swim ability gets so many great upgrades to damage enemies, even when you aren't hitting them, and his punches just keep getting better and better throughout the games. Terrafin is a legendary Skylar for numerous reasons, and I can clearly see why. I mentioned earlier that a starter pack Skyliner is the perfect way to get you into the game and nobody was rememberable as much as Washbuckler. I think every single person who got the starter pack from Swap Force started with Washbuckler or a combined version of him with another Skylander. The fact that you can take both his top and bottom and improve on any other Skylander is just perfection. We will have a ton of more swappers on the list, but I don't think anyone will compare to Washbuckler. Now, I personally prefer his Trap Team villain counterpart to the Imaginators version just because of the pinatas you can explode, but taking an already great villain and just adding a few things here and there can make him even more fun and memorable. There's a reason most people have pinata at the top of their favorites lifts, and it isn't just of how rememberable this character is. He's a purely fun Skylander that is the sweetest combination. Zap is one of the most loved Skylanders. The first Skylander to give us an electric and water moveset made a shocking debut in the first game and was beloved by almost everybody who played as him. So much so that when his Series 2 figure was released, they even dedicated his wow pow to a fallen portal master in memory of him. Zap's moveset is easy to get the hang of, and you can still tear through enemies or levels playing as him while still having a blast the entire time. If you've been sleeping on Zap this far, it's time to wake up. Just like with the Nightmare entry, the debut of Spotlight was a huge one as she became one of the rarest and hardest to come by Skylanders of all time. Who could blame you, however, as she was one of the coolest debuts we could have never seen coming. Spotlight is one of the most unique movesets I've ever seen in a Skylander that shows off the light element in the greatest of, well, lights. It was a long time before I got to finally play a Spotlight thanks to Portal Power TV, but even with the wait, she was so well worth it. We are cracking the top 50 with a Skylar I've grown to love after learning to play as him properly. The running joke on the channel was that I said his bombs were inaccurate while hitting enemies perfectly each time, but I've learned to use his flame breath to my advantage too. It was so common that I used to get swarmed by enemies and never once decided to do a perfect circle with a flame breath to destroy everything in the area. Second chances really do work. Another guest character makes his appearance, and it's one of the best ones they could have ever introduced. As you all clearly know, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro are my entire childhood, and when I found out Crash was back and in Skylanders, I was more than excited. 
Taking the classic moveset of Crash and mixing him into the Skylands fray mixed perfectly together and felt like this kind of game was made for him. We saw how great Spyro molded, so I think it was obvious that when we played as Crash Bandicoot that he would be perfect too. Now, I kinda enjoyed Taekwon Crow and Trap Team, but he was kind of one-sided with his regular sword, so thankfully they upgraded him and made him insanely fun to play as in Imaginators. I think I could play through the entirety of Imaginators just using his flame kick and not once feel like I'm not having fun, even though I just said his sword and trap team was one-sided. Taekwon Crow can be branched out so well throughout your playthrough, so you literally can never be bored of him. That's a challenge, by the way. I'm sorry Bumble Blaster, I wish it could have been higher, but Bumble Blast is at the 47th spot and it's not at all a bad thing. Bumble Blast has one of my favorite combos ever, soaking an enemy in honey then blasting them with bees to do so much damage to every kind of enemy no matter the size. He was the first character in Swap Force I used numerous times because I knew no matter the battle, there was a way out of it and I would love to see it every time. Looks like you guys agreed with me and placed him pretty high up too. Kind of impressive. Now, I've always been a fan of Spy Rise, especially his spider climb and being able to cross over obstacles or climb cliffs while in this form, all while dropping mines to dispose of enemies before you land, and when you do, it's also an attack. Plus, his main attack, the Spider Blaster, upgraded to Sting, not only lets you know an enemy is almost defeated, but you can take a little bit of health each time too. Spy Rise could easily be a Skylar that everyone can find something they love about him, and I know I love every single part. The pure contrast between Enigma and his Magic Trap Master counterpart Blastermine is clearly evident here. I mean, look at the number difference. But I can see why. Enigma has a unique mix of being invisible and still doing so much damage in either form. Getting used to his upgrades makes any run with Enigma such a treat, and you can find numerous different ways to attempt to take out any enemy, meaning every run can be played differently. Wait, is Enigma the original roguelike? I knew he looked familiar. I can openly say Freeze Blade might be the fastest Skylar in the entire franchise. Yes, of course you can make your case about other ones, but I feel like Freeze Blade never slows down in any aspect. The Shock Room seems to like it can be used in any situation with no issue whatsoever, and heading into a fight with a frozen enemy thanks to the Frosticle move makes short work of any of them before you speed off into the next fight. Crash Deck Remake, anyone? So many of the Forgotten Eight are glorified for odd reasons, but Dynarang deserves all the spotlight for sure. His moveset, especially when upgraded, can take a bit to get used to, but once you get the hang of it, this all-around Skylander can be easily one of your favorites. I absolutely love when I feel like I'm being cornered by an enemy and go, oh yeah, it's a boomerang, and I can double hit enemies easy. I'm so glad he got the recognition in the end with Eon's Elite, and I'm very glad he wasn't forgotten by you guys watching. I mentioned that Wallop gave me major smash first forget later motives, and that's exactly what it was when I first played as him. After a few more uses, I got to learn his other moves and how he's meant for close range fighting, but you can mix his hammers to a range attack and then move away from the one trick pony option and becomes a very viable character in Trap Team. It also doesn't hurt that he's such a high health option too, so if an enemy even dares touch him, he can take a hit before they take a hit from him. And they die. A 
Ignite Buddy, you can't be disappointed with how high up Igniter got, and man, it's not hard to see why the fans love him along with yourself. Igniter is one of those Skylanders you first see and are instantly drawn to it. When I saw the original character sheet for Spyro's Adventure, he caught my eye. A suit of armor literally on fire holding a fire sword? How could you not see how cool that was? Metaphorically, of course. Upgrading him makes him even cooler as the sword turns into an axe that can rip through enemies in seconds. Yeah, Igniter is cool. Pun intended. Grim Creeper is the one Skylander I keep coming back to. Whenever I have a tough arena battle I can't get the highest score on, I pick Grim Creeper. Need to find one random item I somehow missed in the level to 100% it? I pick Grim Creeper. I'm bored and I just want to have fun? I always pick Grim Creeper. One of the best overall Skylanders to ever be created and seriously the most fun you can have with any character from Swap Force, Grim Creeper deserves all the love and praise. I knew when I played as Gearshift in my original Honesty Avara episode with her that something had to be wrong. I remember the first few times I played as Gearshift and I loved the fact that she has three different playstyles so you can literally pick and choose your battles and how to approach them. Gearshift got her real second chance later and proved to everyone why she's one of the most fun and versatile Skylanders I've ever played as. Anytime I see Popthorn in my list of Skylanders I get to play as, like in the Rumble or in the Lock, I know I will have an experience due to the fact he can be two completely different Skylanders at once. When puffed, his moves are extremely different from when he was deflated. The fact that he can go from shooting spikes to an enemy to immediately switch into puffs of air, which both do awesome damage, is something I can totally get behind. I love when a Skylander you already love gives you even more reasons to love them. Everyone loves a good boy. Hot Dog was the first dog Skylar everyone knew and loved from Giants, and his moveset shows how great that is too. I adore the fact that, after he does a Comet Slam, he can leave behind a flaming bag of you-know-what that can saw serious damage to anybody who steps onto it, both with actual half-mental harm there too. Imagine not picking up after your dog, that's just criminal. However, Hot Dog is literally perfect and deserving of all the pets, even if it'll burn your hands clean off. My parents found it hilarious that when Giants came out, they gave me both Hothead and Swarm for Christmas, and I was 21 years old at the time. Jokes on them, I'm 32 now, and I'm still as immature. Swarm, however, was one of the best gifts I could ever receive. I kept forgetting how much I loved playing as him in his Flight of the Wasps path might be one of my favorite combo moves he can do. Just flying around, shooting every enemy with the upgrades making him even faster is great for those pesky arena battles. Swarm is an underrated fan favorite, and everyone should adore him like I do. Getting closer to the top 30 now, and Astro Blast is here at 35. Now, I mentioned I never once understood how his asteroid belt moved, but a ton of you have actually given me tips on how to use it properly, and now I get it. It's great for setting up terrain moves, preemptively getting ready to take out some enemies heading your way. However, I can just shoot them with a solar flare instead, and that reflects off of surfaces, so when I obviously miss, I'll still hit them. At least I'll do something right that way. I always make the joke that Blades is the most forgotten and uninspired Skylander, but you also know how much I love playing as him. His Wing Slice ability is one of my favorite combo attacks, especially when upgraded, and I like hitting the Cyclone Swirl as it reminds me of my boy Bash. Blades was the most underrated member of the Dragonlock 2, but I knew that he would outshine every member of the crew throughout that run. Oh. 
I've always seen Whirlwind as a character that people adore, but I never once saw a reason for me to like her. That is until I figured out how to properly use the Tempest Cloud ability. When you mix that with the Rainbow of Doom, it becomes a fun way to take out a mix of enemies, either super powerful or the weakest chopper you could find. Whirlwind became a fan favorite super early into the franchise, and it was easy to see why, even though it took her longer to personally grow on me. One of the only characters from the original franchise before Skylanders, Cinder returned in the first series of a new game and became instantly liked. Not just because she was very similar to how she played in the Legend of Spyro games, but she is actually extremely fun to play as. Her spectral lightning move is a shockingly great move for taking out enemies far away or standing literally right in front of you, and then mixing her shadow dash to literally fly through levels is an easy pick up and play character. I also give Cinder her credit too, as she's one of my fiancé's favorite Skylanders of all time, so extra points there. Alright, every other Skylanders so far on this list, I've justified where they've ended up, but Flameslinger not crapping the top 30 is actually criminal. I don't think I've met a person who dislikes Flameslinger. They don't even do it for a joke reason. I have never once in my entire 10 plus years of playing Skylanders not enjoyed playing as Flameslinger, as he burns through enemies and opponents in PvP with his excellent moveset. Y'all are wrong for this one, and I'm gonna gladly call you out for it. And here we are in the top 30 Skylanders, and what a way to kick us off with one of the most overall fun Skylanders I've ever used. Rattleshake has such a unique mix of moves, either from his top or bottom parts being in use. Every time I got an upgrade for Rattleshake, it just added to his already awesome moveset, and adding the Raise the Snake upgrade to increase critical hit rate, speed, and absorb damage, there is no way you can dislike Rattleshake, and how great he can be. We already had our intro to guest characters with both Crash and Cortex, but it's time to talk about one of the two console exclusive guest characters, Turbocharged Donkey Kong. I was disappointed of course when I found out he was only able to be played on the Wii U version of Superchargers, but thankfully, I owned a Wii U. It was years later I gave Donkey Kong a great run, and he honestly feels like they took his regular moveset and modified it perfectly for Skylanders. It's worth watching some gameplay videos for him, just in case you don't get the chance to actually try him out. A few years back, I would have seen Blastertron this high and got super confused. Thankfully, I'm not an idiot anymore, and I can see that Blastertron is such a unique moveset that's easy to try out, but so great to master. I always got confused with the hologram field move until the very last few minutes during Odyssey Half Hour, where I realized how insanely powerful that thing can be. I really liked that I gave him a true second chance to see how truly great this villain could be. Okay, I think we're all on the same page here when saying how great the Swappers are in Swap Force, but Night Shift has something special. Maybe it's the fact he can bite an enemy and zap the health away from them, or the fact that he has extra lives if you somehow get killed. It's probably the extended punches you can do to take out enemies near and far, then dash around to get to the next fight quicker. The fact you can switch him with any other Swapper gives them an instant upgrade, and he can make or break with the greatest of ease. When I got Spyro's Adventure, it came with three characters. I knew I'd play a Spyro the most, but I started to enjoy Trigger Happy, but then there was Gil Grunt. I'm an idiot for not using Gil Grunt right away. Gil has history as the only Skylar I've ever used in a complete solo run on this channel, and even though I didn't win it at first, I never once had to fear I would do bad. Even using Gil Grunt for the first time, you could see he has so much potential, and that shows when he gets upgraded. He is perfect. End of paragraph. Hail to the 
And here is the top 25, and I'm kind of surprised how we're starting off with Thumpback. Now, don't get mad at me, but I never got into Thumpback. However, his moveset is pretty dang great. I've always loved using his Whale of a Chomp move, as I feel like biting an enemy is one of the most effective ways to take them out and keep them down. Plus, it works in any situation too, along with the Anchor Assault, which can hit enemies far away or give them a good bashing once up close. I do get why all of you love him, and that's why I liked making this list. It just surprised me overall. And here he is, the man himself, the reason I'm even doing this channel and the reason I even tried Skylanders in the first place. Spyro is my favorite franchise of all time, and when I originally saw him in Spyro's Adventure, I was one of the original fanboys who hated it, but thankfully I gave the game a chance and instantly became a fan. Of course for my first run I used nobody but him, and his moveset from the original games is there and shining. Charging in the battle then flaming them to death is something I've been doing since I was 7 years old, and up till now, and forever. That will never change. People adore Prison Break. For years I was on the opposite end, but man oh man, is he fun to play as. Setting up an area full of crystal shards can cause multiple enemies to be taken out without breaking a sweat or moving a step. Prison Break is a skylight that some people needed right away. I remember getting him the same day as Wham Shell, and the guy serving me even said that he was the hottest skylight available right now. I'm glad to see the original hype for Prison Break hasn't died down, and I'm even more glad that I finally saw the hype. The day I got the Dark Starter Pack with Nightmare in the Midnight Museum, I had no clue that that would be the introduction to one of my personal favorite Skylanders I've ever played as. Blackout is one of the most intense Skylanders you can get, as his wing whips put on a huge show to destroy everything in his way, and sending up the black holes that can get you anywhere in a second while doing so much damage along the way. Blackout was the most intense way to throw us into a brand new element, and frankly, I'm okay with it. Hey look, it's my daughter-in-law! Yeah, the running joke is how Flashwing is part of my weird little family with Bash and Bop, but Flashwing is actually extremely fun to use. Setting up the crystal shards with her upgrades so that can be planted on a wall to shoot enemies with extra shards, or just stand beside them to get them healed up if she somehow takes damage. I also think she is the prettiest Skylar ever, and not just me being biased. Well, maybe a little. I gotta be me a little bit at least. Cracking the top 20 is our last guest character, and what a way to end it on with Hammer Slam Bowser. I don't think they could have made a more perfect guest character than taking the Koopa King himself and giving him a huge hammer, but keeping him with his evil moveset, but making it to fight the forces of evil instead is a great idea. I also love the fact that he uses other Koopas to do his dirty work because, well, even though he's technically good now, doesn't mean he can't get other people to do his work for him. I mean, look at Master Eon. James Hetfield will approve of this spot for Wolfgang for sure, as he honestly deserves it. Giving Wolfgang the true run I did during Honestly Half Hour made me realize how great he is, especially setting up the Song of the Underworld to keep enemies far back so you can easily take them out with the musical arrows. His Sky Chi has a huge history in me too, as I think is the best one in the entire game. Looking back at my Every Sensei rank list, I know he has changed drastically because of it, and I can't wait to see my own updated list. Alright, when I got this list, this was one of the most surprising placements that I didn't even think half the people remembered Bouncer. Heck, I even call him Boomer half the time because I mix him up and forget who he is. But I actually love him myself. They took the spam tags of Trigger Happy and then mixed him with one of the coolest robots you can get, with his shoulder rockets being able to take out enemies surrounding you or when you're getting chased down and running away. How's that for an response? 
I'll make sure I'll never forget Boomer again. Oh, crap, I did it again. Crip Crusher is watching happily with seeing the viewers agree with how great Crip King is. When I post him as Skyler of the Week, the support that came out from him was unbelievable as you guys told me how much you loved his Traptanium Sword, where you can let it go off by itself on his own and just take out enemies yourself with easy swings if you'd like. Plus, after you use him more, you can see how great his Swarm move can be after you got a taste of it with Swarm and Giants, but perfected with Crip King. One of the most pure, fun Skylers you could get, we can all agree how great Chop Chop Daddy really is. He's a lobster, and he lobs stars. What's not to love? Now I can see why everyone loves him too, especially since he can do so much damage either when he is hard-boiled or in his regular form. Mixing his dash technique with his fast-throwing Traptanium stars can cause massive damage to all around him, and he keeps getting better and better every time you upgrade him. Lobstar was a Skylar I never knew how many people liked as much as me, and that makes me truly happy. From not being on my Every Sensei ranked list to being number 15 in the top 167, I gotta think Chaos did pretty dang well for himself. Now certain people out there might not even consider Chaos a Skylander, but for this list, he 1000% is, according to Skylander's wiki. He is considered the most overpowered Sensei ever too, with how wild his moveset is, but how accurate it is to how Chaos normally acts. I also love that his Sky Chi is a reference from the first game where you finally actually fear his giant floating head. It only took six games, but hey, at least it finally happened. Down for the count. If you could pick any Skylander that you knew from the first look that you would adore, that would have been Jawbreaker. I knew that when I took Jawbreaker out of his box and placed him on the portal, the pure happiness I would feel would be shown throughout the multiple punches and electric shocks I gave every single enemy I ever seen. Whenever I get the chance to play as Jawbreaker, I know it's going to be a good day. So many people love Camo. That I know. However, I wasn't expecting to be this high. I actually thought he would have been higher. Camo and I have a history. Whether we decide to hijack cards from the legendary first ever lock, and the rest is history. Camo has one of the most creative moves set with his melon fountains, keeping him from taking any damage, then sending out a firecracker vine, especially when upgraded, to take out enemies so quickly. When I had Camo in the forgotten lock, I knew I was going to win because... Crashing Camo, run the world. I've got my eye on you. Only two giants left, and Eyebrawl making it this far makes my heart very happy. I adore playing as Eyebrawl, as his moveset could be one of my all time favorites. Letting his eye fly to shoot eye lasers at enemies while his body keeps doing what he does best, aka swinging wildly, is the first time I got to play as Eyebrawl. It was one of the wildest experiences I ever had and I was not expecting how truly interesting this moveset would be and how remarkable this giant truly is. I'm so glad he made it so close to the top because he more than deserves it. Barely missing out on the top 10 is our introduction to the light element, Nightlight. What can I say about Nightlight that hasn't already been said and glorified since anybody has ever played as him? Nightlight has the best introductory moves that I've seen in the Skylander, where if you used him in his level of Sunscape or Spire, you wouldn't even have to worry about being underpowered. That Traptanium Scimitar is one of the greatest weapons in Skylanders too. You can fight me on that entry for sure. Supercharged. 
All right, here we go, the top 10. Okay, number 10 is Spitfire? Wait, I thought he was everyone's favorite ever. It was like a running joke on the channel for years with how fast his butane brawling punches are and the flash fire move to tear through superchargers as fast as you can, but why would you? It's the best game in the franchise. Like, why would you rush through superchargers? Spitfire gave us the greatest intro to any Skylanders game, and thankfully, it was the best one to start in also. It's got to mean something that if the first guy we get in Superchargers becomes the most memorable one. The, of the, the top 10 doesn't surprise me at all, especially seeing Pop Fizz here. I don't think a single person out there seen Pop Fizz and instantly disliked that gremlin. The fact that you can mix his potion to change his style and gameplay makes everyone with him different and unique. Then you throw in the fact he can turn into frenzy mode, and there we have a whole other different run you can start with him. I dare someone to try to complete the entirety of Giants with each of Pop Fizz's potions. No switching, only allowed to use the one. Go ahead, I'll wait. The leading femme fatale you can play as in Skylanders ends up in the 8th spot, and a few years back, I kept finding ways to dislike her, but I finally grew up and realized how extremely great she is. Stealth was one of the fastest Skylanders you can use, and mixing her decoy in to distract enemies so you can silently take them out from behind is a combo that can't be messed with. Stealth is a handful of people's favorite Skylanders ever, and it easily shows when you have the chance to play as her. As I mentioned earlier, the starter pack Skylers are the ones you are instantly connected to, and Snapshot is one of the best starts to trap team you can get. Comparing him to the other trap masters makes you think you'll see some flaws, but not a single thing bad can be said about Snapshot. His perfect mix of long and close range attacks give you such a variety to take out villains at the start of the game, but once you upgrade him, you'll continue to play as him against everything else just because he's that good. Snapshot might not be the top trap master on this list, but he will always top a ton of your lists. And here he is, the greatest giant in the franchise. This placement is not a tiny bit surprising to me as so many people adore Tree Rex. I know this is a ton of viewers' all-time favorite character in the entire series, and I know why. Tree Rex and Tree Pex give you one of the most fun experiences you'll ever play as, when you slam down the huge arm of his to take out enemies and with the cannon or elbow drop, and then hitting another Sequoia Stampede. Tree Rex might have been the best giant to start everyone's journey off with, and to this day, the best character you could continue your journey with too. Here's your fun fact of the day. Until the middle of the voting period, Magna Charge held the number one spot since the poll opened, and until I started heavily promoting the survey on the channel. However, him holding the fifth spot is not at all a bad thing. Magna Charge is one of the greatest moves of all times, that I call the Yeet, but it's actually the Polarized Pickup, which you can work on so many sized enemies where you can just pick them up and throw them off the edge to defeat them in seconds. There's a reason people use Magna Charge in the final fight with Chaos, and it's because of the Yeet. When I openly say, who's your favorite Skylander and why is it Drobot, this is why. Drobot is one of the greatest Skylanders of all time as he is the easiest Skylander in the world to just pick up and play. Using his afterburns to damage enemies while making him faster, followed by spamming the Mega Blasters that when upgraded become the only weapon you need to actually tear through every single enemy, Drobot is such a likable Skylander that not a single person could look at him and honestly say they dislike him. Only a few spots away from the top prove it, and he has more than earned that spotlight. I keep forgetting how much Chop Chop is loved. 
I remember early days getting into Skylanders on YouTube and almost everyone had their profile photo as Chop Chop, or were playing the game as him, or requesting live streams to be played as Chop Chop. When you first play as Chop Chop, you honestly adore him right out of the gate, or you go, why does everyone adore him, until a few minutes later, and you change your mind to option one. Having Chop Chop almost top the list doesn't shock me at all, and honestly, I could have easily seen him taking the top spot. This is wild. The fact that if I made this list, Wildfire would be number two as he could easily be the most perfect Skylander. The first time I even looked at Wildfire, I immediately knew that I would have a favorite Skylander of all time from Trap Team. Don't even get me started on Dark Wildfire. That's a whole other list. Wildfire's Trap Tanium Shield is the coolest weapon in the game, minus shortcut scissors, and once upgraded becomes one of the hottest weapons in the game. Yep, one last pun before we get to the number one entry. You are more than welcome. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the definitive Skylander that defines all Skylanders ever, and honestly, I couldn't have picked a better one myself. During my first ever playthrough of Spiral's Adventure, my main focus was on Spiral until I decided to give Trigger Happy a try and found out how fantastic he truly is. Just spamming the golden guns and when upgraded, setting up his golden gun turret, and throwing an entire pot of gold onto an enemy to finish them off? Bliss. I think if you said to name any Skylander, people would say Trigger Happy. He is the greatest Skylander of all time, and that I can truly say, and even more, truly admit. And you made it. Congratulations to making it to the end of the video, and congratulations to your boy, Trigger Happy, for being the best Skylander according to you guys. And I mean, you're not wrong. Out of 167 Skylanders, Trigger Happy is the first one. And I mean, think about it. When you got the game, he was one of the first you got, and there's no denying how fun that little goblin boy is. So yeah, I absolutely agree with the number one, even though Bash... And Bash getting pretty high, too. I'm very excited about that one. I wasn't disappointed. I was, I was more like, mm, I wish he was higher. But still, he got higher than I thought he would. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, Wildfire will be at number two, though. That's pretty sick. That would have been the exact same spot in my list, too, so... But yes, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is my end of the year video. Uh, you're going to be getting a video either tomorrow or the next day of a marathon. So it's going to be a New Year's marathon, so you're going to get that. And of course, I'm going to be doing my little break. I'll be doing a video later on, of course, like later on in the month, just kind of catch you up thing. But I always take a break in January, like for the first little bit, to restart myself and get ready for the new year and all that. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support, and thank you all so much for voting in the new year. Hopefully, maybe I'll do something like this at the end of the year. Um, realize this year I did not do Crashmas, which is fine. I haven't done that in years. But this was the year I was technically supposed to show my collection off again, because I used to do it every year. But nothing really changed. So maybe next year I'll do it. We'll see. But thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next year for another awesome set of videos. Year 9 of Crash the Skylines. I will see you all very soon. You all mean the world me. Don't ever forget it, and have a fantastic new year, well, and, and be safe, obviously. But as always, I bid you farewell.